began my interest in piano and in music through my family. My mother was a piano teacher and I got a chance on my own decision to start piano when I was just five years old before I ever started school. So I've been doing that all my life. And I led, that led me into knowing that I was going to be a music major. My parents told me later that I could have chosen any, any career and they would have supported me regardless. But as it turned out, I did do it in music. I was a music major at Hardin Simmons University in Abilene, Texas. And I graduated there summa cum laude. And I'm very happy with that. I went on to graduate school at Indiana University in Bloomington, and I have my master's degree from there. I went back two or three other summers for some extra study, not on a degree, but just to improve myself, and felt very happy about that. It was at graduate school that I started to learn to play the harp. As a, just as a lark, do it for fun, it took <laughs> And I have been with it ever since and love doing both instruments. People ask me which is my favorite. Not fair, both of them. <laughs> I don't know that any one particular thing could be pinpointed as being the thing that spurred me. I think I knew from, <laughs> from the day I started piano that I was going to be a musician. And I love it, and I still love it, and I am very thankful for it. The background was strong. I don't know that what made me lean toward the harp, but it became the thing that I'm known for. You do something a little unusual, that's what people will, will re always remember. And I'm very happy in this particular situation. There are many things that have happened as a result of my being in music, and I'm very happy that they come out as nice achievements. I'm very thankful for that. But I think perhaps the fact that I have had some influence on a number of students who have turned it into fine musicians, fine teachers, and professionals, and I have loved that fact. Personally, aside from music, I have been involved in several professional organizations that have meant a great deal to me. The American Harp Society, that is, of course, a part of my profession but also I am a member of Delta Kappa Gamma Society International, and I'm very proud of that. You had to have taught for five years before you could even be considered for a member, and I'm very happy with that. I have some very, very deep, very good friends through my church, and that means a great deal to me. Trying to summarize my life's work in one word, my goodness, how difficult that is. <laughs> it, it is hard to say. Influence, yes, no. Children, no, I have none. Owning my own home, yes, that's wonderful, but that's not the important thing. Being a Christ follower, but that's two words, isn't it? How can I summarize happiness? My personal inspirations come from Again, from the field of music and from my family. My mother and my father were wonderful parents, wonderful teachers, wonderful Christians, deep people, and very, very supportive, which means a great deal. And my mother had made such a, a fine uh, career out of being a really good piano teacher, even though it was just in the home. She did this in such a fine way. My dad was so highly respected by his peers in his job. He too stayed in his job where he went and stayed and stayed and stayed in the same company. And they really, uh, they, they thought a, a great deal of him. When I went to school, I had some of the most wonderful teachers in undergraduate and in graduate. And Dr. T.W. Jack Dean, his name was Talmadge Whitman, but he didn't want us to call him that. He, he wanted to be called Jack. He was my theory teacher and just a wonderful friend. And then 
My piano teacher in undergraduate was Dean E. Edwin Young, who had a very fine reputation. When I went to graduate school, the first teacher I asked for, I was given uh, that particular one, but I wasn't making the progress that I needed. And they changed me at mid-year at, at mid to another teacher, and he was a concert pianist, Sidney Foster, that was a great inspiration to work with him, and it worked a lot better than the pre previous one had. And while I was in graduate school, I met Margaret White, who was my harp teacher and my inspiration there. But then I have inspirations of some of the great people out in the, in the world, and among those were some of the great pianists and some of the great harpists, and I'm just not going to try to name them all. Since I have no children of my own, my legacy will go toward my students who are my children, and some of them my grandchildren. <laughs> I have in one instance a family where I have taught the mother, her daughter, and the grandmother, and I have all three of them at the present time in, in my, not all of them as my students right now, but actually in, in my studio just the same, and I'll be leaving my, also my one recent graduate as a harp major, I will be leaving legacy to her and others. I've had some piano students that I started. I mentioned one to you early. Oh. <laughs> I mentioned one and have also been very happy to have him back on campus this last week. He is a professional singer, but I was his first piano teacher and that means a lot to me. Those future generations that I'm going to be my legacy, I would tell them and any other student in any field, pursue your field with great pleasure and it's, it's music, practice, but with your brain turned on, you've got to use that too. You don't play piano with just your fingers, you play it with your mind. And that's a very important thing to know and I hope that my students have learned that. When you get that right down to it, I would like to be remembered as a Christ follower and as a very happy musician. <laughs>